Frank, I've been obsessed for most of my life with understanding the universe. I almost became a physicist, but went into brain science. Mm -hmm. uh, I've always still been looking at the universe and wanting to know how is it constructed. Mm -hmm. You have asked a question, which I never thought about, which is really fundamental. And that is with all of these particles, what, 10 to the 80th mm -hmm. numbers of protons mm -hmm. or whatever, why are they all the same? Mm -hmm. I can't make anything the same. Mm -hmm. Well, that says something very profound about the way the universe is constructed. Because what it tells us, or confirms, is that the most basic objects out of which to construct the universe are not particles, but objects we call quantum fields. You can think of them as space-filling ethers that create and destroy the objects, the particles. So. Uh, there's something called the electron field that's what actually appears in our equations that creates electrons. And since there's only one such field and it has the same properties everywhere and for all time, uh, that everything, all the electrons it makes have exactly the same properties. So this is a radically different way to understand what a particle is. Yes, we see particles are kind of epiphenomena in the modern picture of the world. Meaning that they're like an artifact, they really, they're, they're, they're... Well, they're kind of ripples on the, <laughs> on the deep structure. Uh. There's a deep structure which is quite different than the standard sort of Newtonian picture of particles uh, acting with forces. We have fields that fill all space and create and destroy the particles. The particles are just sort of ripples in these fields, is the best way to think of that. <laughs> And, and therefore, the, the question about why are they all the same would then evaporate because you don't have to then create all these particles one by one to make them all the same. It sort of happens automatically? The more basic thing is the field. And there's only one field uh, for electrons. And so it creates all of them. And then because they're all emanations from the same or manifestations of the same object, uh, they're all the same, rigorously the same. And that's why you can have chemistry. It's not only electrons, but also protons, neutrons, the different sure. constituents of matter. They all are th the same, no matter where you find them, out in outer space and so forth, because the underlying structure are these quantum fields. What did science think before they knew about fields? Well, most scientists didn't think about it at all. They said, <laughs> well, we observe that uh, there is such a thing as chemistry, so the particles have to be the same, and that's good enough for us. We'll go on with our work. So it's just an but assumption. It, it was a, an assumption for most people who wanted to get on to work on whatever other problems mm -hmm. they were working on. But some profound thinkers, some of the deepest ones, uh, notably including... Maxwell of Maxwell's equations mm -hmm. and Isaac Newton of classical mechanics and gravity fame uh, explicitly asked this question. Why, how can it be that the particles, the building blocks of nature are all the same? Why don't they get worn down? And why don't they, why aren't they like solar systems that aren't all the same? Right. Or ordinary objects certainly aren't all rigorously the same. We see books of different shapes and sizes, and so people of different shapes <laughs> and sizes. Uh, and things change. And things change, right. And uh, they, of course, didn't have the notion of quantum fields. <laughs> Maxwell sort of introduced the fields, but not the, quantum, not the quantum part. And in his article in the Encyclopedia Britannica on atoms, a large part of the article is devoted to this very question. And his conclusion is that they had to be manufactured. Right? That's the only answer that made sense. It was kind of also in the context of the Industrial Revolution. Oh. So, uh, <laughs> and for, this, this, for him, this was an argument for the existence of a manufacturer and really for God. Oh. And Newton similarly, oh. because if you have these things that can't change by any ordinary physical process, how were they produced? How, how they had you had to get them from something that was a change. <laughs> so, uh, how could you have something that is not a normal physical process that produced? And he also appealed to God as a and, as and a, not only that, but you'd have to keep them all the same and keep because them all if they rubbed the against right, each right. other, they would so, uh, yes, rub and, off a little bit. Right. So, so you have Newton, to keep them. Newton said that they were hard, massy, impenetrable, unchanging. Huh. 
uh, they, and people tried to make mechanical models that were, you know, only had a few stable states, things like that. But it was really only with quantum mechanics that it became possible to begin to understand these things, and really only with quantum field theory that uh, we started to understand them properly. So really to go to the fundamental construction of the cosmos, we have to look at fields. Yes. And particles are an epiphenomenon, as you said, a kind of a ripple on these fields. So yes. Maxwell was the first to look at electromagnetic fields. That's right. He, he, well, he took the idea from Faraday's right, experiments, right, but right. he formulated it mathematically and so right. he took it to the next level. And so this mathematical that, formulation of yes. fields is very critical is it? because mathematics is something that remarkably describes these fields in some amazing yes. ways. And the equations take on a life of their own. Hmm. Uh, in Maxwell's case, he put together the known laws of electricity and magnetism at that time, and they weren't quite consistent, so he changed it a little bit, <laughs> <laughs> added a term. <laughs> uh, Faraday had discovered an effect that changing magnetic fields make electric fields. Right. Maxwell's new term said that changing electric fields make magnetic fields. So now you could have the thing if you had a changing electric field, it would make a magnetic field, but the magnetic field is changing, so it makes uh, a changing electric field, and so it could move along. Uh, and Maxwell figured out that this moves along at the speed of light. And he said, gosh, that, that is light. <laughs> and to this day, that's how we understand light, as the equations take on a life of their own, and it's, elect it's electric and magnetic fields oscillating. And it went beyond that, of course, because of, in addition to the visible light that was known at that time, he predicted that you could have different wavelengths that aren't in the visible region, aren't seen mm -hmm, by our mm -hmm. eyes, and those are things that we now call radio, infrared, gamma rays, x-rays. The whole spectrum. Yes, the whole spectrum. <laughs> so, so it all was predicted, came out of the uh, unification of those equations. So now the, these are the waves of electromagnetism, which yes. Maxwell formulated with his famous equations. Now, yes. how then did the quantum field theory developed because out of these is what we develop as the particles that, that at least we call matter. <laughs> right. So in Maxwell's uh, construction, the equations take the form of equations for electric and magnetic fields, which are things that fill all of space and time. When you add quantum mechanics, uh, then these fields are quantized, <laughs> which means that they produce little lumps Photons. They come in discrete bits. Right. Yeah. They, so they make photons right. in the case of the electromagnetic field. But the reasoning is general. If you want to have a theory that's consistent with uh, both quantum mechanics and special relativity, of course, Maxwell didn't realize this at the time, and it was right. even Einstein didn't realize it but, but in, at first, but uh, out of the developments of 20th century physics, uh, we now understand that if you want to combine quantum mechanics and special relativity, you must introduce fields for all the different entities, uh, or a better way to say it is that fields are the most fundamental uh, objects you can use to construct the world. And so there's a field for electromagnetism, that's Maxwell's field, and produces photons. There's also a field for electrons, and it produces electrons. Um, and similarly for every other basic constituent of, of matter. So, so how many fundamental fields would there be? Uh, is that, <laughs> can you even ask that kind of question? Well, you can ask. <laughs> the answer is a little sketchy. It might sound like a straightforward question, but it isn't. The, because uh, the fields are not independent of each oh, right, other. Right. They, have, they have strict mathematical right. relations among them. And so it's a little bit depends on how you count. Uh, in what's called the standard model of particle physics, uh, again, depending on how you count, uh, you could say, <laughs> there are a couple of dozen fields. Uh -huh. Uh, if you believe in unification, you can reduce that number to two or three. But and that's not commonly accepted yet. Well, as speculations go, it's one of the better motivated speculations <laughs> and more concrete, but it's certainly not proved. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, 
and it's 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 sort of a fun. It's, it's also this sounds funny. It's a it's a function of the way you write things. If you if you write one equation, you might say, well, there's one object that appears in that equation. But if you if you if that equation secretly had is for an object that has many different components. Oh yeah, yeah, right, right, <laughs> then right. Then you might want to count all those. So, right. So it's to be specific, like for the electron field. It's very common to say there's just an electron field. But if someone wanted to be fussy, they could say, well, there's an electron field for electrons that are spin up, and there's another uh -huh. field for electrons that spin down, and there's another field for positrons that spin up, anti electrons. Anti -electron. that, so you could say that there are four fields, right. but that would be silly. It's really, they all go together. So, so if the fields are the fundamental thing and particles are ripples on the fields, and the mathematical equations and formulations are what describe the fields. Does that make mathematics even more fundamental than the fields? <laughs> this gets back to your question of how the universe is constructed. Certainly the way our models of the universe are constructed is using mathematics. There are a few very precise, uh, in a certain way, simple, beautiful, partial, mainly beautiful equations uh, that describe the laws. They have a lot of symmetry. Most ways you could think of changing them make them worse or inconsistent. So they have those aspects of beauty and simplicity. And when you add to that a bit of information about conditions in the early universe, that it started out very hot and almost but not quite completely uniform <laughs> with fluctuations that are of the simplest possible mathematically consistent type, so-called Gaussian random fields, uh, you get a universe emerging that uh, in broad strokes resembles ours on its <laughs> large-scale structure, and we have plausible, although not detailed, uh, pictures of how from, from these fluctuations, this structures, galaxies, and stars and planets eventually emerge, as well as, of course, a detailed account of the interactions among elementary objects that's sufficient to do chemistry and biology and all those things. So, yeah, it's all mathematics, and this takes on a life of its own, as we uh, it, the equations have this marvelous way of giving you more than you back, than you put in. <laughs> And there are loose ends. We don't understand everything yet. Uh, and the equations maybe aren't quite as beautiful as they could be. But I don't think that central conclusion that the model of the world that really works is a mathematical model is going to change. I think that's here to stay. <laughs>